dermatologist. I work at San Diego Family Dermatology in National City in California. I'm also an adjunct professor of dermatology at the Toro College of Osteopathic Medicine in Vallejo, California. Today, we're gonna to talk about scabies treatment, challenging and status quo. We're gonna discuss diagnostic and therapeutic approaches and challenges. Scabies is more than a nuisance. In 2017, the World Health Organization designated scabies as a neglected tropical disease. Scabies is caused by the mite, Sarcopodus scabii. If we look at the cartoon, you can see mites, you see the epidermis and the skin. As we look closer, you see mites on the surface of the epidermis. They enter through the stratum corneum. They create burrows and lay eggs in the superficial portion of the skin. Scabies has a significant impact on the affected individuals. This may include secondary bacterial infections such as Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus pyogenes. It also causes severe and chronic pruritus. The classical presentation of scabies is that of papules, vesicles, and nodules. The burrow, which is the tunnel lesion, is also pathognomonic and is often found in the finger webs. A non-classic presentation of scabies, referred to as scabies surreptitious, has several variants. One of these variants is crusted scabies, in contrast to classical scabies, in which there may be five to 15 mites on the patient, in crusted scabies, there are hundreds of mites. This form or variant of scabies is more often seen in patients who are immunosuppressed, whether medically or through other etiologies, or who are handicapped either mentally or physically and not able to scratch at the lesions. The itching and scabies is characteristically worse in the evening. If we look at the presentation of scabies, the lesions can occur on multiple areas, fingers and finger webs, toes and toe webs, the wrists, elbows, knees, groin, the buttocks, the penis, the scrotum, the axilla, belt line, ankles, feet, breasts, and underneath the fingernails. There is classic lesions of burrows between the finger webs, more excoriated papules on the flank near the axilla and burrow on the glands penis with papules on the medial thighs in the examples provided. In infants and young children, in contrast to older patients, lesions can occur on the palms and soles and also above the neck on the scalp and the face. These are often nodular lesions, although blisters in the newborn can be the diagnosis of scabies. Pictures show nodules in the axilla, the flanks, the back, and abdomen. Additional pictures show lesions on the palm, the ankle and foot, the penis, and the lateral hand with classical peering burrows. Even with an accepted practical system of global diagnostic criteria, the diagnosis of scabies can be challenging and is often delayed. Let's discuss some diagnostic approaches and challenges. Despite consensus criteria, the diagnosis of scabies is an imperfect science. There are several diagnostic techniques that can be utilized. They are both clinical and confirmatory. Physical examination and history of the patient, Burroughs ink test, topical tetracycline, and light microscopy and dermoscopy. The history is that of pruritus most often intense at night. The typical lesions, classical lesions, are the burrows. These range between one millimeter and one centimeter. They may be serpiginous. In infants, lesions may be above the neck and it may be on the palms and soles. In adults, often mites may be found underneath the fingernails. It is also helpful when taking a history to ask if there are other members of the family who live in the same dwelling if they are itching or have skin lesions. The burrow ink test initially used India ink that was utilized in fountain pens. Currently, magic markers may be used, rubbed on the lesions, wiped off with alcohol, and the residual, demonstrated in the picture here as a purple trail, represents the burrow. This test is 
rarely performed by dermatologists. It may be useful in children, or it may be useful in trying to identify or confirm the presence of a burrow. Similarly, a tetracycline solution can be applied to the suspected sites, excess wiped away with alcohol, and then a woods lamp, which emits ultraviolet A radiation used to illuminate the area and a greenish color or hue may represent a burrow. Once again, this technique is probably seldom used by either dermatologists, family practitioners, primary care physicians, or other clinicians. Discussing some of the diagnostic techniques, the scabies preparation is the gold standard. The image you see shows a large mite, multiple eggs, and several feces or skibola. This is performed by placing a drop of mineral oil on the lesion using a 15 blade to scrape the skin and then applying the oil and the content that has been derived onto a glass side and viewing with a light microscope. Although this is a useful technique in the family practice setting, it might be considered to be invasive, time consuming, and logistically demanding. Another diagnostic technique is dermoscopy. This is a highly sensitive and specific technique that can be used to evaluate potential skin lesions of scabies infestation. However, it is user dependent and requires the presence of a dermatoscope. In 2018, the International Alliance for the Control of Scabies created criteria for the diagnosis of scabies. There is confirmed diagnosis of scabies, a clinical diagnosis of scabies, and a suspected diagnosis of scabies. The confirmed diagnosis requires the observation of either mites, eggs, or feces using a light microscope or a dermatoscope or more sophisticated office equipment. A clinical diagnosis of scabies requires either the presence of scabies burrows or typical lesions affecting male genitalia. If we look at the image of scrotum of a young man, there are several nodules. These are the typical lesions noted of the male genitalia. The third possibility is typical lesions such as excoriated papules in a typical distribution such as the breasts or under the axilla and two historical features which include a history of itching and a history of contact with someone who has scabies. A suspected diagnosis of scabies requires only typical lesions in a typical distribution and one historic feature or non-typical lesions, non-typical distribution, and both historic features. For both clinical diagnosis and a suspected diagnosis of scabies, other diagnostic possibilities should be considered and possibly excluded. There are numerous diagnostic challenges and limitations to establish a diagnosis of scabies infestation. These are related to low rates of correct diagnosis by inexperienced clinicians. There are also numerous barriers to clinicians' ability to provide the confirmed diagnosis since there are no standardized laboratory tests and there's not a standardized laboratory clinical examination procedure to follow. An accurate diagnosis is of real value only if safe and effective treatment options are available for individuals in whom the diagnosis is established. What are our current therapeutic options for the management of scabies? There are over-the-counter products. There's permethrin 5% cream, oral ivermectin, and lindane 1% lotion. Over-the-counter products have not been tested and are not approved for human scabies. Some of these products may be helpful for relieving the symptoms of scabies, but are not effective for resolving the mite infestation. These might include calamine lotion, topical antihistamines, or oral antihistamines. Permethrin 5% cream is one of the currently available therapeutic agents. It is both scabicidal and ovicidal. It is first-line therapy and approved by the FDA for infants older than two months of age. It is applied topically to the skin, absorbs through the epidermis, 
hand into the dermis, going into blood vessels and then spreading to other areas of the body. Its efficacy used to be higher and seems to be decreasing. This may be secondary to possible resistance of the scabies mites to the agent. Lindane 1% lotion is also approved by the FDA, but is not recommended as a first line therapy. Indeed, in the state of California, where I practice, it is banned. If we look at the cartoon, again, we see that the medications applied topically is absorbed through the skin and absorbed by blood vessels. In addition to reaching multiple other tissues, it also is capable of crossing the blood-brain barrier. The systemic absorption can result in neurotoxicity and adverse events such as seizures. The likelihood of these events are more prominent in younger patients and elderly patients. Ivermectin is an oral agent that is used in the treatment of scabies. It is an off-label product and it lacks ovicidal activity. However, it is as effective as permethrin. It is absorbed through the small intestine, travels through the bloodstream to other organs, including the skin. It then is absorbed into the sebaceous glands and then secreted to the stratum corneum where the mites eat the drug. Clinical resistance to ivermectin has been documented. There are indeed therapeutic challenges and limitations to the treatment of scabies. It's been more than 30 years since the last FDA drug has been approved for this mite infestation. It is difficult to achieve control. This is in part because the application of the medication is not being appropriately done. For example, patients may not be treating under their nails and they may not be able to reach all areas of the body. It is also possible that other family members and people who cohabitate with the patients are not being treated. Also, the mite is developing resistance to some of these prior therapies. How can we come overcome some of these challenges? First, education on the rec recognition, diagnosis, and therapeutic options and limitations in webinars such as this. And second, possibly the development of a novel targeted topical therapy, which has improved efficacy and safety while avoiding resistance. Now let's move on and discuss the promise of the targeted topical therapy. The FDA has become more stringent in its evaluation of potential therapeutic agents. They want adverse events to be better characterized. These include erythema, edema, and erosions. It includes symptoms such as paritis, pain, and burning. Also, in those individuals in whom these reactions occur, they suggest determining whether it's an irritant versus an allergic contact dermatitis. And if an allergic contact dermatitis, whether it's to the agents alone or the agent and the subsequent exposure of those locations to sunlight. What are the properties of an ideal targeted topical therapy? This would be an agent which would recognize a specific target. It would be active only at the targeted site. It would avoid the safety and tolerability issues associated with systemically absorbed and potentially neurotoxic agents. It would avoid fluctuations in drug levels. It would not lead to increased pathogen resistance and it would be agreeable in its physical properties and easy to apply, resulting in high compliance in its use. What would a targeted topical therapy mean for scabies? The ideal targeted topical therapy for scabies would be a medication that is highly selective, highly effective. It would be absorbed only in the stratum corneum and would subsequently be removed as the epithelium desquamated. It would have a favorable safety and tolerability profile. It would be convenient for application and it would not promote the development of resistance by the mite. In summary, despite the existence of a consensus criteria, the diagnosis of scabies remains challenging with low rates of correct clinical diagnosis. 
disease control is difficult to achieve for a number of reasons, one of which includes the slow emergence of mite resistance to the current therapies. The development of a new mechanism of action for escabicide is needed to meet the new standard of a complete cure. To date, there have been no new treatments for scabies that have been approved by the FDA since 1989. Indeed, a novel targeted topical therapy that offers selectivity, efficacy, safety, and tolerability, yet would not promote mite resistance to that agent would be ideal.